Is this thing on? Oh, okay, cool. Hi. Uh, it's September 13th. This is the Microsoft Developer Sync. Um, and um, yeah, well, let's just go around and check in on status. Um, uh, see, see what exciting things have happened over the weekend. Let's see. Uh, Gez, you've actually had a whole day. Uh, well, I was... Oh, no, that's right. You were taking off. I was at um, PyCon uh, all weekend. So, um, yes, it was a pretty pretty big weekend. Uh, good conference. There's some interesting stuff uh, around PyPI and dependencies that I've, I've done tickets for in, um, in Jira um, for things for us to look at. Um, there's some stuff around classifying audio um, that I posted in the machine learning channel um, that, you know, is just along the lines of things we were already looking at. Uh, yeah, anyway, a whole bunch of ideas. I've got a list to, to follow up on over time. Um, uh, but other than that, um, my fixes to... Cucumber, well, fixes, but, you know, ripping out the, the um, deprecated library from Cucumber and Behave um, has been accepted upstream, so that's on its way down, so we should be able to revert that change pretty quickly. Um, I had another look at the, the XDG PR, so moving, moving skills to an XDG compliant location, um, uh, and just tried to like pull out any questions that I saw through that thread because it's a pretty long discussion thread. Um, it doesn't seem like there's anything uh, that's an issue there. Um, the only one is, you know, if 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 we want to use a different um, directory for the skills to actually live in, then we need to work out what that could be um because there's there's not really a lot of options for xdg which is you know kind of the point you put data in one place and caches in another place and um it doesn't really deal with code? executables and stuff what was that where do you put code well yeah it doesn't doesn't i don't think they're really it's i don't think there is a place for code or applets or you know executables or anything like that it, it doesn't really it's not intended to handle that sort of stuff so we're kind of limited in what we can do but i um i link i linked to the to the couple of documents that describe each of the locations and and pulled out a few of the descriptions that um that i thought were relevant so um have a look in there uh i also was just running that branch for a little bit to you know, make sure it worked and um, hit an issue with uh, the skills kit MSK. So we'd have to fix that before we merge it as well, um, which makes sense. If, you know, it it's creating skills, so it needs to be aware of XDG as well. Um, uh, and what else is happening? Um, adapt seems to be uh seems to work fine with python 2.7 so if anyone is running python 2.7 then um then okay and uh and sean are um gonna update it to to say that it's supported um yeah i think that's about it uh other stuff as usual but I haven't caught up on anything from overnight, so don't ask me anything about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's go to Derek. Uh, sorry, Derek, I should have started with you. Oh, no worries. I'm having some internet issues over here. It was right when my internet dropped off anyway. So, um, yeah, so basically I've just been continuing some of the work that we were doing last week on... Um, that orientation changed just because it was already fresh in my mind and I wanted to wrap 
wrap up some of it. Um, but there's also this component we needed from um, from Aztec in terms of the uh, uh, documentation of the the contract around the market too. Just like a quick. Turns out it's it's probably smaller than what we thought. Just a quick um, spec sheet. So I would, it, it seems like two pages is going to be, you know, just a, not as detailed as we thought would, would be fine for the, this point. Right. Um, so yeah, it was just kind of consolidating. We'd had a good start on that actually. So. Yeah, I'd like to use that. That'd be great. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. And that's, that's basically been what I've been up to today. Okay. Cool. Um, Ken? Okay, I want to get this stuff right. All right, let's see. I looked into the alarm skill issues, but I'm blocked until I can boot my Mark II, which I haven't been able to do since last Thursday. Um, I met with a potential test vendor today. Well, I canceled the meeting, or he canceled the meeting. I don't know if you were following that, Michael, but I was confused as to what he expects or what he's looking for, but I didn't really care that much, so I didn't follow up. Yeah, me too. I looked at the Panacore Hub to try to figure out why my device won't boot. Um, and I guess if I'm running from what I saw Chris V posted, I guess if I'm running, uh, I'm confused because I thought if we were running tests, it was Mycroft Fleet, but Chris said something about, oh, where was it? That it's like Mycroft something else? What is it? Um, anyway, yeah, Mycroft Prod Fleet. So I'm confused. I don't know what version of the build I'm running. I have no idea what I'm running. And I don't understand why it stopped magically working last Thursday. So uh, my debugging capabilities are a bit hindered until I understand what user we are in Panacore Hub that these devices are running under, and at least I could take it from there. So. Um, yeah. Sure. Yeah, yeah, like we shouldn't we shouldn't ever need to go into that account, really, unless something's really wrong. So. Oh, my, my Mark II not being able to boot since last Thursday, I felt uh, fell under that category. Yeah, did you, but have you, have you flashed a new image, or are you trying to, like, no. You want to try and restore. That was updating periodically fine until Thursday. Yeah, I mean, the challenge is when we when we edit code on the devices and then update, then, you know, things are going to get out of whack because it tries to not overwrite areas that you've been modifying. Yeah, I that sounds like a. Had it not modified the code I had running in the connected uh, check, then everything would be working fine. It's overwritten that for some reason, which I'm fine with. Uh, it overwrote that several weeks ago, um, I assume, because if you recall, mine simply changed HTTPS to HTTP and used a well understood location that supports HTTP because many locations these days try to redirect you to HTTPS, which is what I think the fix somebody put in there might have had a mistake with. But that's not even my concern. My concern is that since Thursday, my device has not been able to boot. And I'm assuming anyone else who was running the same build I am would be in the same situation. But I don't know what situation I'm in. And that is my status update. I am doing what we had discussed or what I responded to your comments in that page that I, you sh I shared with you, Michael. Uh, so I responded to your comment, but yeah, that's exactly what I'm doing. So uh, not blocked on that, but blocked on anything to do with my Mark II and anything current. So if somebody can get my Mark II booting again, that would be great. Uh, if not, they can tell me what I have to do to get it booting again, short of reburning a new image with all the code that I've developed over the last several months on that drive. That would be helpful. Uh, but yeah, it would be nice to be able to get back into my Mark II. Uh, can I get into my Mark II by connecting it to a Ethernet hub, or has that local connection ability also been um, removed? 
No, Ethernet. Ethernet works fine, yeah. But right, but you still have to have the key, right? Well, that? it depends. You have to. It depends. SSH key would have to be installed already, right? Well, I'm assuming the SSH key would stay the same whether it was a Wi-Fi or Ethernet connection. Yeah. I don't know that to be true. I guess I'll find out after I spend a couple of hours trying to dig up my reverse Wi-Fi hub because things aren't so easy here since everything's Wi-Fi. I don't have any direct connect. So I have to actually take another router and put it, refresh the firmware with reverse routing mode firmware and connect Wi-Fi to a local... Ethernet but so it is booting, it's just not connecting to Wi-Fi. Is that what you're saying? It won't connect to Wi-Fi. Right. But it will boot. And it comes up and and uh, says, hey, you know, uh, I've created a network card in Life Mycroft. Connect to it. You connect to it and it reboots. Or it'll just sit there and not connect. Hmm. Okay, well, that needs to be a high-priority item. I mean, if it's a bug in the... All the Wi-Fi setup stuff is that's on the Panacor side, right? Yeah. And assuming yeah. you weren't fiddling with it, then that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I mean, I was going to reach out to Panacor, but I didn't even know what device ID it was because when I went into Mycroft Fleet, it showed no devices have communicated for over a month. So then Chris V said it might be Mycroft Prod Fleet, so I guess I'll look at that. But. It's annoying, uh, you know. I mean, um, um, yeah, but we, I've been down well, since Thursday, Mark, too. Fortunately, you, I've had other stuff I could work on, but yeah. You really, you really need your device ID, like, um, because you don't want to just want to go clicking through every single Microsoft user's device until you can find yours. How might I get a device ID if I can't connect to my Microsoft Mark II? Well, you've there, there is no way at the moment other than connecting to it. So, but you, I, I've got an idea. Take the flash drive out, stick it in your Apple, and read the file. Uh, potentially, but it's a, a, uh, yeah, there might be a spot you can find it. Simple, but even then, it's not so much a file I need, it's lots of files. <laughs> um, it's a bit harder because it's a squash FS file system, so you're like, it's not just going to mount in the same way as, yeah, you know. well, that too, but. Anyway, I'm I'm all ears if somebody has a solution. Otherwise, I'm kind of blocked, and uh, I guess I'll allow well, that to stay like that until tomorrow. At which point in time, I'll have to put a full court press on trying to figure it out. Okay. Um. Well, I don't know. I guess maybe you can help him out with that. Yeah. Yeah. Um. I should hang out for a bit after and we'll try and figure it out. Yeah. Nothing's changed on the Wi-Fi Connect thing too, so that's why it confuses me. But, yeah. Well, I, I think that the larger issue to me is that unbeknownst to us, and when I say us, I don't know if that includes you, Gez, something changed that broke the Mark II. And I find that very disturbing. Right. Yeah, but, but nothing like I've I've gone computer. in and checked the the images and and literally nothing has changed in weeks. Mm -hmm. So that you know. And yet Ken claims his Mark II won't. Work. That's really interesting. Well, so no, I don't I don't disagree that his his Mark II won't. Yeah, so like something has changed on that device for sure, but nothing has changed from the the update process. Well. That's fine, but if nothing changed, then what that means is that any Mark II that is powered off and powered on is susceptible to getting into this indeterminate state. Yeah, no, it's, it sounds like a um, definitely a bug we need to track down. So, all right, so let's uh, hang out after the. I'm assuming the, the, the proper is solution is to get a fixed build deployed so that when I plug it back in the next time, it will try to update. But I find that a really interesting conundrum since if you can't connect to the internet or you believe you don't have a Wi-Fi connection, to be more technical yeah, about it, obviously how problematic. would you ever know that you needed to update? Well, you should try booting from, I mean, you can use your Mac as a, as a bridge. 
um, and uh, just connect to the Ethernet port on that. Uh, no, I can't get to my Mark II. Uh, through the Ethernet port? All right. I don't know. I might be able to get through the Ethernet port if I spend a couple hours getting a reverse router connected so I can directly plug in. No, I mean, well, I mean, I don't know. Let's talk about this offline. Yeah. Um, uh, okay, so Ken is blocked because his hardware is not working uh, and apparently uh, stuck all of his valuable code in one device and didn't have a backup. We'll talk about that later. Uh, no, this is all experimental code, right? Like TensorFlow Lite runtime and yeah, yeah, stuff like that. The, the original alarm skill, but mm -hmm. you know, I backed up the original alarm skill, so that's good. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. You, <coughs> the code I run is a lot different than you guys, just so you know. My Mark II works seamlessly, so I don't run the same stuff you guys do. I have a lot of different code. Someday, well, I'm assuming when somebody says, "Hey, this doesn't work," I can say, "Well, mine does." Here, you know. Well, that'll be the subject of tomorrow's discussion. Yeah. Anyway, let's move on to Chris Bear, and we'll get into debugging this later. No. It doesn't matter what <laughs> router you give me. If the device can't connect oh. to Wi-Fi, I can't get into to reconfigure it to tell them yes. Wi-Fi can it connect to. <laughs> You're responding to Derek, I see. All right, Chris. So um, I've been blocked most of the last few days from doing a lot of development work because I've had zero internet connection. That has now been fixed, obviously. I'm, my ugly mug is now visible to all of you, so that, that is my indication that um, my internet's been fixed today, so that was just like a half hour before this meeting, though. So, um, as what I have been doing, um, been working on some documentation, um, shared some of that today. Been looking at some PRs, shared some concerns about those in the in matter most today. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I've been doing is what I can do with my browser, basically, um, is um, you know looking at PRs and, and doing and writing things. Um, so now I'm freed up. I can test some code that I've been needing to test before I submit a PR, but I realized as I was looking for things to do, um, Derek, I don't know what the state of, um, the UI designs are for anything beyond, um, I've got date done, time done, um, alarm done, timer done and weather done. But after that, um, I looked in Figma a little bit. It looks like the um, you know, the pairing skill doesn't have the it isn't using our latest design uh, aesthetic. Um, I'm not sure if the Wi-Fi skill is or not. Um, and I think there's some other skills like there's an install skill, that, and there's I'm not you know, there were some things in there for the um, wiki skill, but I didn't quite understand what you're looking for there. So. Maybe you and I just need to get together tomorrow and talk through um, what I can, you know, what 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 skill I can attack next um, from the GUI standpoint. Um, yeah, yeah, that'd be good. I think any one of those are an option. Um, I I have some real small amount of work I think to get the the Wi-Fi. I started doing it. I was starting to review it again to get the Wi-Fi and pairing up to the to the new um, UI frame, UI design guidelines. Yeah, those are pretty big tweaks. But I think, I actually think that the wiki and the Q&A stuff would be a good one to, to kind of start to look at too. Um, so yeah. either, either way, but yeah, we- All right, well, we'll touch base tomorrow, maybe after the, um, after Blue Systems meeting or something. Okay. Yeah, if you if you look at the uh, the Confluence page for the uh, Sprint twenty one and twenty two, that that chart we were using before, you know, there's a bunch of blank boxes in there, and one of the notes is that the uh, a lot of these, all the music and news related stuff, uh, and and even the wiki related stuff, the, the common query and the music, uh, common query and common play, uh, are waiting for a uh, defined framework. 
Um, and right now we've noted that as being done as part of the music sprint. Um, but uh, if you can get to the definition of that, you know, sooner than that's great. Um, but then the, you know, we've got volume pairing installer and Wi-Fi as all not having anything in, in the GUI column. Some of those may be NA, uh, but uh, if you guys could go through that chart and just basically note, you know, all the things that, that need to be done and create tickets for each, each one separately, that would be great. Where did that chart go? <clears throat> Last I checked on the base software page, it was gone. It's the second link on the base software page. Oh, okay. Yeah. That helps. The page is getting big. So. Just for my edification, do you have an iPhone or an Android? You and me? Yeah. iPhone. Okay. And I keep, uh, for an extra $20 a month, a MiFi adapter that's LTE to Wi-Fi. And my rationale for that is that I can't be out if my network goes out. But every time I tell people that, they tell me, well, I can tether. So my question is, does tethering not work on your iPhone? <laughs> um, I was able to tether my laptop to it, but not my Mark II devices. And it works okay, the tethering? To my laptop, yeah. I got 40 gig of tethering. You would have had to SSH in and tell it a different... Uh... Oh, so you're in the same boat I would be, right? In other words, you don't have a way to get into your Mark II to reconfigure your Wi-Fi network. Correct. But I was able to tether my laptop to my phone, design we went with. Is, which is what allowed me to do the things I was able to do for the last few days over yeah. the, on my web browsers. Yep, got it. It's just a side effect of the way we decided to go with our deployment system. Okay. But yes, I will certainly do that, Michael. I'll, I'll make, create those tickets and um, and I'll get with Derek tomorrow and I'll have some GUI stuff to work on. I've been held up on the GUI stuff because of the timer scale and um, yeah. So I think that's been resolved. I do have, um, I think I mentioned this before my internet went out, but I do have um, some alternate code that to what is in um, the marketplace right now that I think we should probably look at. Um, Cause I think there's some false positives right now in the, in the timer skill VK tests. Um, and that's what this PR I've been, I just mentioned is for is to um, address that. So. Right. Okay. Well, great. Um, then uh, I guess it. Uh, thanks for the updates. It seems like we've got a couple follow-up discussions to have, but uh, as far as the dev sync goes, we can call it here.